Hey everyone, imagine this. It's April 26th, 1986, just after 1.20 a.m. And somewhere in northern Ukraine, Sector 4 at Chernobyl quietly blows its top, sending out more radiation than all the nuclear tests in history up to that point. In the next eight minutes, we're going to walk through exactly what went wrong, how brave people tried to stop it, and why this accident still matters today. So, what was Reactor 4? It was one of those Soviet RBMK-1000s, basically 1,600 fuel tubes surrounded by giant blocks of graphite, all chilled by water that also doubled as the neutron moderator. Now, here's the kicker. When water turns to steam, instead of slowing things down, it speeds the reaction up. That quirk, called a positive void coefficient, meant if too much steam formed, the reactor could go from stable to unstable in seconds. Late on April 25th, the crew wanted to test whether the turbine's residual energy could keep the cooling pumps running during a blackout. Sounds smart, right? But earlier, maintenance had dropped the reactor's power down to just 30 megawatts, way below the safe limit of 700 megawatts. To bump it back up, they yanked out most of the control rods and even disabled some safety interlocks. That set the stage for disaster. At 1.23 a.m., steam pressure spiked so fast the reactor core basically blew itself apart. First came a steam explosion, then pure graphite fire when air hit the red-hot core. The roof plate, solid concrete, launched skyward, exposing boiling fuel and graphite to the open air. Fire crews showed up within minutes, not even knowing how lethal the radiation was. Lieutenant Vladimir Pravik led a handful of men up onto the smoking roof, dumping sand, lead, and boron acid by hand to smother the core. Many of those liquidators took doses so high they got sick within hours, and some never left the hospital. When everything blew apart, about 5 times 10 to the power of 18 becquerels of radioactive material escaped. Iodine-131, deadly to thyroids, spread over 200 kilometers in days, tainting milk and crops. Cesium-137 stuck around for decades, and strontium-90 lodged itself in bones. In the first week, hundreds of locals got acute radiation syndrome, and over the years, thyroid cancer rates in kids shot up significantly. Soviets scrambled to build a concrete tomb, a sarcophagus, around Reactor 4 by November 1986. They dumped 5,000 tons of sand from the air and used 400,000 cubic meters of cement, plus 7,300 tons of steel. But over time, cracks formed. So in 2016, crews slid in the new safe confinement, a 36,000-ton steel arch, 108 meters tall, designed to seal everything in for the next 100 years. Chernobyl changed how the world thinks about nuclear safety. RBMKs got retrofits, control rods redesigned, interlocks added. The IAEA's safety conventions now include protocols born from this disaster. And today, the exclusion zone is both a grim reminder and a living lab, where fungi and plants are adapting to radiation in ways scientists never expected. Chernobyl wasn't just a nuclear accident. It was a turning point in human history. It exposed the cost of secrecy, the fragility of technology, and the bravery of ordinary people facing impossible odds. Decades later, its echoes still shape global energy policies, safety protocols, and scientific research. In a place where nothing should grow, life has found a way. And maybe that's the most haunting part of all. This was the story of Chernobyl. And what really happened on that night in 1986? If you found this video interesting, make sure to like, share it with someone curious, and subscribe for more deep dives into history and science. Thanks for watching.